Howdy, folks. How are we all doing? Oh, I am. Hang on. Let's get down there a wee bit. Let's fix this mess. Bobbing in to say hi. Hi, lovely scientist. How are you? Ah. So, chat. We have a problem. And by we, I mean I have a problem. I've been thinking a lot recently about this channel, and uh, I don't know what I'm doing. You know? When I started this channel, I wanted to very much, you know, break down narratives and, and be a uh, clever clogs and all that sort of shit. And I don't think I've been doing that over the past couple of weeks. Maybe the past couple of months. It, I, I'm not satisfied with the work I've been doing. So that is going to change, I think. Um, that's going to change. Has mate got some of the bathroom accommodations done for me and they are so nice. Ah, oh, that's lovely. So. I've been nervous about starting a big new franchise because you know how it is with new franchises. You, uh, it'd be much easier to go and watch a comfort show or read a comfort book or what, listen to the albums you know you like rather than starting something new. But as a result, it means that I have just kind of played Minecraft and with, like little indie things and not really gotten a chance to do what I wanted to do with this channel. Which is where you come in. I'm going to basically need to know kind of what order you guys want to see things. Because I've, I've picked out a couple of games. Picked out a couple of games, a couple of franchises. Where I'm like, I could do a narrative analysis on that. And now I just kind of have them listed. And I don't know if today is going to be the first of those new, uh, those rebooted streams, but they are certainly going to be um, more prevalent in life. So I'm thinking today that I start with... That I play just something effectively random. Um, I don't know. Memes and funny. It won't be Minecraft, Sigma. Um, no, so the options kind of available are, I want to look into doing the Portal series, uh, Resident Evil Biohazard, and maybe Resident Evil 8, following that. Um, Red Dead Redemption 2. Bi the Bioshock series, and the Dishonored series. Uh, those are kind of the first main options. There's also Fallout New Vegas, a game I am intimately familiar with, and Hellblade Sienna's, uh, Sienna's Sacrifice? Senua's? Senua's Sacrifice? Hellblade. And I've been... I've been on such a cowboy kick recently that I'm really thinking Red Dead Redemption 2. How are we feeling about some cow folks? 
Got my little cowboy hat and everything. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. All right. Let's do some yee and some haws. Capture specific window. Let's see if I can get... Let's see if I'm the fastest clicker in, in the West and if I can open this before... On, on the game capture before it gets too far in. This is the wrong screen. This is the right screen. <laughs> All right, we're going to We're going to do red that it seems. Um Red Dead Redemption 2. And this is going to be the first VOD that I actually make an effort on saving, so... Gotta make myself look nice for camera. And, uh, I have to do the intro bit. Um, let's have a look at the settings first. Subtitle speaker name on. Subtitles on. Wanted. Help to. Okay, all of these being dynamics is good. Simple. Reticule dot size. Default. Okay, those all seem fine. Graphics. Um, our graphics level seems okay. You know what, let's be safe and turn that down to high. And we have to restart the game, okay. Because it's ultra when I play on my own, but high might be a better call, uh, protocol for this point. It's helpful if I if I open the game again. Waiting for the game to load. So yeah, one of my problems is I, I've gotten into the habit of wanting to get through games quickly. And that's not great when you need to pause and talk about things. Um, so, this is going to be a slow playthrough. But, hopefully, it will give you a little bit of more insight into how the story is constructed, how the characters are. I know a lot of the story of Red Dead Redemption, so, yeah. Anyway, anyway. Hello, everyone. We're going to play a uh, bit of Red Dead Redemption and have a look at it from the narrative lens of a filmmaker. I'm Sky, I'm a full-time filmmaker and a bit of a writer and I like to look at games from a narrative perspective and break it down. And we are starting our adventure with the tale of Arthur Morgan and the Vandalin Gang. Chat, you need to let me know if there's any technical issues or any quality issues, okay?
And of course, chat, if there is anything about this, uh, any particular moments on the stream that you like, that you think are particularly insightful, be sure to give them a clip. So fun fact, I have actually sunk 178 hours into this game, but it was all been on the online, so I've not done a huge amount of the story, but I do know a lot of it, I just haven't played through it. By 1999, the age of the outlaw and gunslingers was at an end. America was becoming a land of laws. Even the West had mostly been tamed. You know a story is going to be good when it opens with text. A few gangs still roamed, but they're being hunted down and destroyed. Rockstar Games presents Red Dead Redemption 2 An absolutely beautiful looking game as well. Abigail says he's dying, Dutch. We'll have to stop someplace. Okay, Arthur's out looking. I sent him up ahead. Uh. If we don't stop soon, we'll all be dying. This weather, it's May. I'm just hoping the law got as lost as we did. There! Arthur! Any luck? I found a place where we can get some shelter. It's a beautiful, it's beautiful right. game. You know, an old man in town. Abandoned. It ain't far. Come on. Come on! Yeah! All right, so we're primarily introduced to the player character of Arthur and the other titular character of Dutch in that scene. Um, chapter one, Coulter. Things are not looking good for us right now as the gang. So we're on the run from the law and we have that like members of our, our gang are dying. So, from a narrative perspective, we are at a real low here. Miss Gaskell, get that fire lit quick. Miss Jones, bring in whatever blankets we have. Mr. Pearson, see what we've got in terms of food. Davy's dead. There was nothing more you could have done. What are we going to do? We need supplies. Well, first of all, you're going to stay here, and you were going to get yourself warm. Now, I sent John and Mike scouting out ahead. Arthur and I, we're going to ride out, see if we can find one of them. Miss, just for a short bit, and I don't see what other choice we have. Listen. Listen to me, all of you. For a moment. Now we've had well a bad couple of days. I loved Davy. 
Jenny. Sean, Mac, they may be okay. We don't know. But we lost some folks. Now, if I could throw myself in the ground, in their stead, I'd do it. Gladly. But we are going to ride out, and we are going to find some food. Everybody, we're safe now. There ain't nobody following us through a storm like this one. And by the time they get here, well, we're going to be, we're going to be long gone. We've been through worse than this before. Mr. Pierce, Miss Grimshaw, I need you to turn this place into a camp. We may be here for a few days. Now, all of you, all of you, get yourselves warm. Stay strong. Stay with me. We ain't done yet. Come on, Arthur. Now, that's interesting. We've got some work. Like... We ain't run into them yet, so they both must have headed down the hill. Sure. Hey, I ain't had time to ask. What really went down back there on that boat? We miss you. That's what happened. Come on. Oh. So. Hey, you need horses? Oh, yeah. Hey, Mr. Smith, get yourself indoors. You need to rest that hand. I'll live. Get in. So, there's, there's a lot of things happening here immediately. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, one, first thing I noticed was Dutch has, you know, clearly been a leader a long time for a lot of his life. He has been doing this for a while. He gives very clear and very direct instructions. Get yourself warm. Get some food. Get inside. Do this. He knows what he's doing. He's not a man to, to mince words, so to speak. But this is kind of odd. Because later, when Arthur's like, what went down on that boat? Which is, as I uh, to give you a bit of backstory. Um, thank you for sticking around, my love. Thank you for the sub. Um... To give you a bit of backstory, we were in a city, Dutch and a couple other characters went and did a robbery, it went wrong, we had to flee. Um, Dutch's refusal to explain what's going on in that regard is quite concerning, because Arthur's like, what happened? What, what happened on that boat? And Dutch is like, oh, you weren't there, that was the issue. It's like, that's, that's not an answer, that's deflection. He's deflecting the point. He, and he's also kind of stroking Arthur's ego in order to make sure that Arthur doesn't ask anymore. Which then throws into question a lot of the other stuff he said. Because if he's refusing to give an answer, we can assume, or we have to kind of assume, that maybe he is feeling a bit guilty about it. Maybe it's something he wants to cover up. He wants to keep quiet. Which then throws into his question about him throwing himself in the ground in this uh, uh, in replacement for for the other dead gang members because it's like well if you're the reason we're here if you're the reason we're here then w would you do that because you're alive and our friends are all dead. It's a quite interesting point, but also that line of "stay with me." That's a really important line because I've I've seen a lot of people who read this line as like you know again it's it's part of his direct control. He, he's affirming himself to the group and and that sort of stuff. I read that line a bit differently. To me, that line is a little bit controlling, and maybe this is because I have full knowledge of what will happen. Um. But that line is initially designed to come off as reassuring. However, when it's presented by someone who's not giving us all the facts, who's not giving us all the information, 
it feels controlling. Like, to some of it, it seems like this is Dutch, maybe unintentionally, going, you need to stay with me if you want to survive. You, I am your chance of survival here. Just create some concerns. Okay. All right, let's head out. Ain't sure what we're gonna find out here, Dutch. We have to try. Stay close. We'll do our best to stick to the trail. This goddamn weather. Been two days or more like this now. Oh, it has to blow over soon. You also notice the characters are very yeah, relaxed around here. each other. So it it shows an immediate history and to some extent connection. Can't believe we lost Davy too. He's the last one, Arthur. No more. We need to get those people warm and fed. At least we don't need to worry about Pinkerton's tailing us in this. Uh, a couple more days. We'll be on the other side. You need to help me pick the others back up. You're the only one I can rely on to stay strong right now. Wait, is that some? And there, uh, there's another piece of inf like narrative information. Is it, it that immediately shows Dutch and Arthur's relationship? Even that little interaction where where Dutch is like, "Hey, watch the bridge here." By the way. It it gives, you know, the, the kind of mentor, mentee, father, son point of view. And then Dutch having what from what we've seen, the closest thing to, to a moment of civility and a moment of humanity being like, I need you to stay strong and stay by my side because I need you to be able to pick the others back up. Um which tells us kind of about the way in which Arthur is viewed within the group. That he maybe is is more of the emotional core of the group. That he's someone that people can look at for for inspiration and for hope. Because when you're dealing when when as a writer when you're dealing with a big group dynamic like this, it's quite difficult to make sure that certain characters don't overlap in their function in the narrative. Gentlemen, found anything? I think so. Found a little homestead down that way. Okay. Anyone home? Sure. Place is blazing with light and noise. Sounded like a party. Let's go see. Follow me. <clears throat> How's Davy doing? Well, he didn't make it. Nor did little Jenny. That's too bad. Davy was a real fighter. Both of them calendar boys is. Or <laughs> was. Yeah. And Mac, Sean. He goes completely past Jenny. There, he's like, oh, I like them. They could fight. Quite a business. Mac and Sean, the other male gang members, what about them? And they're like, we don't know. Completely ignores Jenny. Like, don't get me wrong, I do believe that all these characters do sincerely care for each Look other. You but anybody else? I, I reckon we're the only ones crazy enough to be out in this, Morgan. Yeah, well, don't talk to me about crazy. Even the way in which the characters talk to each other is interesting. That, like... You know, everyone refers to each other by first name, except Micah refers to us as Morgan, which is our last name. Micah, look! It's all gonna work out, Morgan. Which is either a we sign of respect a folks, or a sign of well, I'm glad you're feeling so good about it. Um okay. dismissal. Let's keep it down now, gentlemen. It's just up ahead. I'm gonna go over that ridge if I don't stop, Jesus Christ. Okay. 
Let's head down there. Coming fast. Yeah, okay. Health is displayed in the lower left corner. Let's hitch up here. Sounds like a bit of a ruckus going on. Let me handle this. We don't want to spook these fine people. Sounds like quite the party. You two, get yourself out of sight. One lonely man is a lot less intimidating than three nasty looking degenerates. Arthur, in that cattle shed on the left. I could get down behind See, immediately, we're here to ask these people for help, and we're immediately trying to deceive them. Some trouble up the way, lost in the storm. Ah, gentlemen. We can't help you, mister. I got folks. Arthur. Dying on the Arthur, train. we got a problem. <laughs> oh, look, there's a corpse right here. No, I, I just Arthur, need some There's a body food in the wagon. Or something. Uh, I hear you. Just keep your eyes on Dutch. Please. Oh shit. I think you should go now, buddy. Now, friend. I ain't asking for much. Let's go for the lantern. Oh shit, I am a bad shot. Upside down. Grab as many supplies as you can. We need the essentials: food, medicine, whiskey. <laughs> Dutch is a man who knows what he wants, at least. Hold X near items to pick them up while searching the house. Oh, I don't believe it. It's a strange one, all right. Maybe they're hiding up here too. Revolver cartridges. Driscoll's head. Nearly as big as the one on yours. Tasks. Okay. Wanting Colm dead is about the only thing me and Uncle Sam agree on. Oh, I'm starving. You should eat something. Now, get your strength up for the ride back. Open your hold this button to open your satchel. Eat some classic oat cakes. Got some canned veggies. Place is dry, and warm. We could maybe move the women and Jack down here. Maybe. We'll see how they are when we get back. I don't really want us to split up. Uh, looks like the poor bastard was married too. At some point. If we can't eat it or drink it, put it down. Jake and Sadie's wedding. We're just pillaging this poor guy's house. Like, he's dead, but... 
No honor amongst thieves, you know. I'm going to start packing the horses. You keep looking. There's a coin purse. Two whole dollars. Grab anything you think we can use, then meet me out here. Join Dutch after searching for supplies. Cigarette card. So what does it say about someone who lives all the way up here on their own? You know, we can assume that the family are maybe isolationists. Maybe they, maybe they have their own issues with the law. Maybe they, you know, subscribe to a similar philosophy as us. Where it's clear that they are, they're not hugely fond of, say, governmental regulation and stuff. You know, maybe they don't have a choice. Maybe they have to live up here. Maybe this is all they have in the world. So they just kind of have to make do with the best of it. Location can be a really interesting way in which we use plot. Or reveal plot. Arthur. Keep looking for stuff. Arthur, go see if there's anything in that barn. Micah, you search the cabin. See what we miss. Sure. Open barn door. I mean, there's a horse. Oh, shit. Did he now? Stinky little bastard. Should I kill him? No. Not yet. Interrogate. Find out what they're doing here and where Calm is. Oh, this son of a bitch would talk. Where's Calm O'Driscoll? With the others. At an old mining camp southwest of here. Near the lake. Thank you. What are you bastards doing? Why are you up here? Uh, we're fixing to rob some train. Gonna blow the tracks. No, I don't know more than that, I swear. <laughs> well, I would say it looks like you have this, Arthur. Do what you want with him. I don't care. But bring that horse when you're done. Interesting way they frame Dutch there, where his face is obscured by the shadow. Please. Get the hell out of here. Go. See, I figured that, like, we may as well let him go because it, if, um, if Colm you know, wonders where his boys ended up. They're gonna come here. He's gonna come here with his forces, and we're just up the road. Whereas, ideally, if that guy is like, yeah, we were jumped by some people, and da 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 da, maybe, you know, Cole will be like, convinced not to go after us. Because we can't really afford to have another fight right now. There's probably some twisted logic, but, like, we need to reward good, like, good behavior. Or behavior that complies with us. Because it's entirely possible that this guy now will just be like, yeah, we just, you know, the, the locals killed us or, or whatever. Oh, shit. Leave her alone! I wasn't doing nothing! She's one of them O'Driscoll's! No, she ain't, Michael! Look at her! Miss! Miss! Are you- Fuck your fool! Michael! Miss! 
Now, it is gonna be okay. We mean you no harm. Miss, miss. Come on. See, that's we'll very okay. good uh, conflict um, negotiation. But what the fuck am I here? You okay, miss? They came three days ago. And my husband, they... Oh, so this is Sadie. Okay. Miss, you are safe now. And you can't stay here. You come with us. Arthur. Miss, it's okay. Bad man. We ain't them. No. That's a really okay. interesting way in which yeah. Arthur we'll keep you safe until you figure out what you want versus to. Dutch categorizes the um the What's gang. Your name, miss? Miss. Adler. Adler. Sadie Adler. Mrs. I he he was my husband. That's a really interesting way in which Arthur and Dutch uh, view themselves that gets revealed there. Because Arthur is, or Dutch is like, you know, we don't mean you any harm. We're going to look after you. You're safe with us. And Arthur is maybe a bit more matter of fact. He's like, we're not good men, but we're not those guys. Which is interesting where you set up your dynamic to be compared to someone else. And that is a that's kind of a slippery slope of, of justification. Cause you can be like, well, you know, we do horrible stuff, but we're not the O'Driscolls. We do we do awful things, but that guy is worse. Which really for writing a characters like outlaws is a really good idea because it's a way in which you can still feel heroic about doing bad things looks like it's dutch hey everybody dutch is back how'd you get on uh, micah found a homestead but he weren't the first Colm o'driscoll and his scum they beat us to it uh, we found some of them there, but there is more about, apparently. Scouting the train. Thank you. That's the last thing we need right now, Dutch. Well, it is what it is. But we found some supplies, some blankets, a little bit of food, and this poor soul, Mrs. Adler, Miss Tilly, Miss Karen, would you warm her up? Give her a drink or something. And Mrs. Adler, it's gonna be okay. You're safe now. She looks like a deer in the headlights. Turns her into a widow. Animals. She looks like. I need some rest. From her perspective, she's hidden in a cellar for three days, and then you know these guys have shown up. One of them burned down her house. They stole her horse and took all of her stuff, but took her with them. And then she shows up to like six or seven lights, effectively being shined in her face. Like no wonder she looks terrified. You're over here, Miss O'Shea. I'll show you the way, Mr. Morgan. We put you in a room over here. Thank you, Miss Grimshaw. Mr. Bell, you're with the fellas over there. What? Well, how come Arthur gets a room and I get a bunk bed next to Bill Williamson and a bunch of darkies? Oh yeah, this is something we're gonna have to address. Um, the game is set in the the late 1800s. There is going to be a bit of uh, racism, a bit of sexism, a bit of homophobia. I would say there'd be a bit of transphobia, but I don't think there's any trans characters in this game. But they, these people, or this game is wrote to reflect the values of the time. And that time is something that can be considered, and, and rightfully should be, looked back on with condemnation. And could be considered triggering for some people. So I'm going to warn you that now. Uh, to my knowledge, Micah is one of the primary sources of just overt racism, but as we explore more of this world, we are going to encounter more of it. Put yourself to bed. Do you think we're not supposed to like Micah, though? Like, he's shown to be rash, violent, racist, sexist.
Enter. Pursued by a memory. He ain't been seen in days. Okay, so some time has passed. He's strong. And he's smart. Strong, at least. Hello, Arthur. Abigail. Arthur, how you doing? Just fine, Abigail. And you? That immediate suspicion with where he's like, what do you want? I need you to... I'm sorry. I'm sorry to ask, but... It's little John. He's got himself caught into a scrape again. He ain't been seen in two... Two days. Your John will be fine. I mean, he may be as dumb as rocks and as dull as rusted iron, but that ain't changing because he got caught in some snowstorm. Please go take a look. Javier? Yes. Javier, will you ride out with Arthur <clears throat> to take a look for John? <clears throat> You're the two best fit men we've got. Now? She's... We're all... Yeah, we're pretty worried about him. I know. The situation were reversed. And he looked for me. So there's Thank clearly you. some vamos venom between Arthur and John. This way. Last I know, John was headed up the river. For all we know, he kept riding north and never looked back. He wouldn't leave. Not like that. Uh, wouldn't be the first time. And we're given the reason. John has evidently left the gang before and Arthur doesn't trust him. Little narrative hooks like that, which pay off into little narrative, um... Immediately answered. You can immediately answer your narrative hooks if it gives you more intrigue onto a character. Let's hope it ain't more of O'Driscoll's boys. Well, seems somebody left recently. And that way. Sure, well, come on then. There's some tracks leading to the river. Did I see a hat? I could swear I saw a hat there. Two hours ago, most. Abandoned camp. Let's cross. See, they continue up that way. Horse health is displayed in the lower job. left corner. You tell me. Your horse will collapse if These the health bar fully sure, depletes. Could be anyone. Let's just see where they lead. So. You were there, Javier. What really happened on that boat? We had the money, it seemed fine. And suddenly they were everywhere. Bounty hunters? No, Pinkertons. It was crazy. Raining bullets. Okay, so... Watch out for this crevice. Definitely a setup of some description. Dutch killed a girl in a... bad way. But it was a bad situation. That ain't like him, though. And maybe that's the shame I was talking about, that Dutch was talking about. He did something out of character. He killed someone. He killed a, he killed a woman aggressively, it seems. And then... Maybe that's why he refuses to talk about what happened. By the time you boys showed up from the other side of town, we were only just holding on. Bad business, all right. This is a good example of how to do exposition. Where Javier isn't repeating all of the events of the day because Arthur would have been present for that. And obviously the, the worst sign of exposition is when characters just regurgitate facts, especially facts that characters that the character that they're supposed to be talking to would have been present for. Um, so, you know, they could have phrased it being like, well, we had this job on uh, in Blackwater on this boat, and then we got on the boat, uh, but and the robbery was going well, but then the Pinkertons showed up, and we were ambushed, and we had to call for your help. After, 
um the all of these characters got shot and then you guys showed up from what you were doing on the other and you know it, it's clunky and obviously no one would actually write like that but the information we're getting is javier is more accurately filling in pieces of information while also leaving stuff out you know he's vague on the pinkertons he's vague on the robbery we don't actually know what happened robbery went well then it went bad and that's all we kind of need to know it, it fills us in without necessarily just beating us over the head with facts coming in hot again we'll lose these tracks if we don't move fast Exposition, writing background exposition is something I'm struggling to do in, in some of my own written work at the moment. So it's good that we have this, stuff like this where like it's very, very plainly shown. Careful, it's getting narrow here. And you know, I don't know if Dutch, like, I don't know if the writer's intended for Dutch to feel ashamed. Um, but based on the information that I have collected and insinuated yeah, a lot of fresh snow here. it seems uh, I've been able to draw my own conclusion here, about the character uh, let's push on a little bit maybe we'll pick up the trail again almost there boy. come on now. hey look over there you see that more. Oh, the dead, dead animal. John was riding that horse when we left Blackwater. Let's see if he can hear us. Oh, there's definitely Come something. On. Do I have to do it on my horse? It's easier if I just did this. It's coming from up ahead somewhere. I don't think we can go much further on the horses. We'll have to walk from here. I grab that shotgun from your horse. Who knows what's up ahead? Approach the saddle on your horse. God damn it. Rollicking through the snow. Come on. Look at the view. See, from a writing perspective, this game also features something that I cannot wait for. It's slippery, be careful. Which is a journal. Arthur records his thoughts. So we can get Arthur's perspective on events. You're telling me. You sure about this? Over here. It's coming from this way. Okay. We also see that Javier is very passionate about the idea of loyalty yeah, and brotherhood here. because he is ref absolutely refusing to I mean look at all the shit we're going through for John Watch your head here. and he's like if it was the other way around John would have done the same whereas Arthur's very much more he's unsure of that he doesn't okay. necessarily have that same agreement Watch your step. Real and simple. I think that's because Stay brotherhood and, and honor matter this as way. much to Arthur but because John has betrayed that brotherhood in the past, Come on. Arthur might be very, very slow to forgive now. and slow to Come forget. On. We're coming, John. Doing? I'm miserable. Then it's a few days. 
I know. Here, take a drink of that. Thanks. Kentucky Bourbon. Well, that's littering. Let's keep moving then. Come on. John, can you hear me? Marston, you hear me? We see it again. Just like how Micah doesn't use um use John's full name. Um or do use, use Arthur's full name. We uh we see that Arthur isn't using John's full name. So maybe this is something that's picked up. Maybe this is an intergroup dynamic that we're not aware of, is that when you don't have that respect for someone, you don't use their full name. John, where are you? John, you there? I'm here. Not on the ledge. That's John. We're coming. That was there. Over here! Alright! Hot down, Marston! He's down here. That's quite a scratch you got there. Hey, John. Never thought I'd say this, but good to see you, Arthur Morgan. And maybe some of that uh, that venom is recuperate like is, is dealt back by you John. I don't feel too good, neither. But... I'm freezing. There is clearly some some aspect of care between them. Don't die just yet, cowboy. Like this interaction with, with Arthur being like, you don't look too good, and, and don't die yet, cowboy. It's like... There's clearly something between these two characters. Well, we can't go back the way we came. Also, I think that's the original Red Dead Redemption theme. But then Arthur immediately puts him down again. Come on. Hopefully this will lead us out. Oh great. You see that on the ridge? Perfect. You head for the horses. I'll keep John's friends off until you're clear. Okay. Go, John. We'll leave them to Arthur. Over here! Hey, over here! We're getting close. Nice and easy. Hey, back. Oh. oh, God, the dogs! That's, uh, I, I want my revolver back. Follow Javier. Hello, Fee Cortana. How are you doing today? Come on, then. Let's get back to the others. I don't feel too good. You'll be fine. It's just like a, a dog bite. Uh, knew a fella. Got bit by a dog. Died. How are you? What's the story of Red Dead Redemption? Uh, well, we're only in the first hour, so you'll find out. Um, so far, gang on the run from the law because of some event that has occurred. More coming down the hill. And things are pretty shit right now. They want John. <laughs> you see any more out there? Don't think so. Jesus. You still with us, Marston? Just about. You're gonna be okay. We have some shelter now. Thanks for coming for me. 
course. That bullet in Blackwater, now this. You had a hell of a time. And Arthur always says, I'm lucky. None of us are lucky right now. Now, I'm not sure if that's intentional. I knew that was coming up, but that's why I was getting ready for it. But it seems that the author, maybe, maybe by accident, has tied John's luck the way we perceive John's luck as the way as a as a metaphor or a link to the group's luck. So maybe when things are going well for John, things are going well for the group. But when things are going bad for John, things are going bad for the group. And that's not really like uh you know, I'm not saying that in the narrative or in the world that's how it works. But as a reader, we can kind of gauge how the group is doing based on John's luck. <laughs> Should ride in the water for a bit. Try to lose a scent. Don't want to leave a trail right back to camp. You know, we're gonna need to come up with a better story for that scar. So, freezing, bleeding, starving, damn near getting eaten to death ain't good enough for you. Here, let's cross to the left. Yeah, come on. Let's push hard to get back. See those buildings up ahead, John? That's where we camped. Nearly there. Javier is really good at that reassurance thing where he keeps John like he keeps John very much in the loop. He's like, John! these are where we're camped. Going this is what's going on. Source. Can we get some help here? Can we get some help? We need some help here. Come on, help him down. You're alive! You're alive! All right, here we go. There we go. Ah, you careful, idiotas. It's his leg. Well, come on, let's get you warm. Thank you. Thank you both. This is a new low, even by your standards. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you. You got any other lost maidens need saving? <laughs> Not today. If you and Dutch talk about how we're gonna get out of this. I was just discussing with Herr Strauss when the weather breaks. I uh, suppose we'll have to keep heading east. East? Into all that? That civilization? I know. The west is where our problems are worse. Come on, Herr Strauss. Let's get warm. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Interesting the way Arthur uses the word civilization as though it's a... Uh, uh, expletive. Like, it, the way he says it shows... We've been running for weeks. The way he says it shows his perspective on it. He he views it as a dirty word. We found shelter and been resting here in some old abandoned mining town. Journal, yes. Fall. Hardly the spring I had been hoping for. God, can we not board up this window a bit better? All right, view our journal. Yes, let me view the journal. Blackwater. Okay, here's the backstory. Coulter. Uh, oh wait, no, hang on. Blackwater. That's it. Just gonna have a listen to these two. Shot at before, Jose. I don't feel that this is honestly anything new. I hope not. We had a bit of bad luck. But then the storm covered our tracks, so now we wait a bit, and we go back to Blackwater, and we get our money, or we get some more money, and we keep heading west. But we're heading east. For now. For now. We got this. We're safe. Stay strong, Jose. What about you, Arthur? You doubting me, too? I think in the scenario that we're presented, we are perfectly justified to be doubting Dutch. Never. Good. Because you know me, son. I'm just getting started. Once we get some money, well, they... They better send some good men after us, because they ain't never gonna find us. But we need money. Of course, Dutch. Thank you, son. And the strength. way in which... It means a lot to me. The way in which Dutch leads into that conversation is interesting because he doesn't he doesn't ask after what his opinion is. 
He doesn't go, what do you think, Arthur? He goes, are you doubting me as well? That's a that's a leading question. Where and obviously if if as we've uh, we've observed, Arthur and Dutch clearly care about each other. So if that's something you care about, if if they lead into a question effectively accusing you of something, you're gonna naturally be like, no, no, it, it's fine, even if you don't necessarily believe that. And then him being like, thank you for your strength, you know, I I need it. It's that. It's almost like he's shaming Hosea. Because you have to remember that Hosea is in this conversation as well. Where he's like, at least Arthur believes in me. Which maybe shows some tension between the two heads of the group. And the fact that he immediately, they immediately turn away from each other. We weren't there, Hosea. I'm aware of that. And they shouldn't have been either. Oh, we can't change nothing now. And the money's well hidden in Blackwater? I believe so. And they don't even know we dumped it. Oh, well, it can wait then. Well, just hang in there. Okay, Arthur. Well, try to stay strong. Thank you, Arthur. Arthur is very much the... You okay in here, Molly? It might be warmer by the fire. I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Anyway, try not to work. Okay, Arthur. So, if this is my room, in here, and that's uh, Molly and Dutch's room, I guess this is Hosea's room? I guess older, the oldest member put him near the fire makes sense. Anyway, journal. Read. No, this is the Coulter chapter again. This is not what I want. Okay. I might be on to something. We've got plenty of money and the trail we took was so torturous and slow nobody could have followed us south and east or figured out where we were heading. We was thinking about California, but then Dutch and Hosea brought us to Blackwater. Can we just acknowledge how good an artist Arthur is? Blackwater has apparently grown a whole lot since any of them was last here. I was told to expect little more than a trading post. But the place has grown fast, and it's almost a small city. The town seems to be riddled with corruption, but there's certainly plenty of money here. It's good to be sleeping in a bed, for time to time, and living a more civilized life after so long under canvas, but I do not particularly like being this near to the town. I mean, just the fact that Arthur can write and read says so much about his character. Because this is a time where education isn't isn't a big thing, so the fact that and we saw uh, we saw Dutch reading a journal as well. So the fact that these two characters can write and read is massive. We are living here, camping outside of town mostly, hiding in plain sight. I guess life seems pretty easy. Abigail and Marston keep arguing. I wonder why exactly he came back. He cannot seem to decide if he wants to be a father to that boy or not, of his or not. So now we get a bit of backstory as to John, and why maybe John left the group earlier. The arguing is exhausting. I heard talk of a man that sounds like Trelawney, but we haven't seen him in many months. And he's got a little drawer under the camp. Hosea and I might be onto something. Something pretty big. Might be a lot of cash coming in to do uh, with a real estate scam Hosea thinks he may have discovered. I am not sure yet. The perfect crime, we think. One where we rob crooks. We are being real careful. Okay, so they clearly have a Robin Hood perspective on their life. It's fun working with Hosea again. The man is an artist of nonsense. Even if nothing comes out of it, we are having an amusing enough time. It's good to be running scams again. Hosea is a born huckster. He's getting anxious. Worried that by lingering in town, we are going to bring undue attention on ourselves. But Dutch thinks he's also onto something big. His words, not mine. Bank money being brought in by a boat, apparently. So for now, we're working on both things and seeing what happens. Plan is to flee west into the desert country someplace if we can. 
Macca and Dutch are planning to rob the ferry in town. They think it's laden with riches, cash coming in for banks by the boat. For once, I am not getting involved in this job. Hosea and I are too taken up with our business, which I believe could go very well, and Dutch seems confident that with the group assembled, all will be okay. Plan is for them to carry out the job, then flee into the wilderness out west. The next day, Hosea and I carry out our scam and join them. Dutch seems happy and excited. He's talking again about California, but he's talking about a lot of places. This is one of those interesting things. Dutch repeatedly brings up the plan. You know, we just gotta get some money and then we'll do the plan. But there is never quite confirmation on what the plan is. The plan seems to be get some money and go somewhere else. But that's effectively what we have been doing up until this point. So I don't really see how the plan is different from our regular life. Also, I think I missed a page. I did. Okay, it was just, uh, it was just like, okay, I have a new journal. Here it is. Dutch has a lead for some land we were going to buy, but the land did not match up to his criteria, or he got spooked we were being watched by the law and that somebody knew who he was, and we never bought it and we are wandering still. Jenny. So this is Jenny, who we met. Jenny and Micah. So that's the closest reference we have to the plan, is that... And even there, in, in the journal, it kind of implies that Arthur isn't really sure as to why we didn't go through with it. We've been running for weeks. I mean, running more than usual. The job they were pulling in Blackwater, robbing that ferry, it turned into a disaster. Young Jenny got killed, poor thing, while Sean and Mac are both arrested or killed, nobody seems sure which. Dutch shot a girl. I'm not too sure if by accident or by design, it seems like it might have been a setup. We took to the hills in an almighty scramble, leaving money behind and most of our things. So this is why the group is where it is. And Davy died. Then, as we were fleeing east over the Grizzlies, an almighty storm hit us. Davy Callender, who got shot in the gut on the raid, passed away. It was brutal to watch, and the rest of us nearly froze, but we found shelter and have been resting here in some old abandoned mining town while we await the thaw. Hardly the spring I'd been hoping for. Hosea and I have been planning a robbery of our own in Blackwater, but I guess it's been abandoned along with most of the, what we own. I'm profoundly concerned as to what happens next once we leave this place, or the law finds us cowering up here. Found a girl, well, a woman, I should say. Her husband had been murdered by some of Cole, Old, Cole O'Driscoll's, Cole O'Driscoll's boys. Nasty business. Oh, also, this game routinely mispronounces Colm as Colm, so I'm going to be pronouncing it correctly. Because I'm pedantic and a bastard like that. Opened items provide half the benefits of new items. Okay there, Dutch. Thank you. Thank you for bringing John back. Finally, some relief. He's beat up, but he'll be all right, I hope. Well, we are in a tense time. I mean, look at where we are. How you feeling, Jose? You've been coughing a lot. That's the cold. Thank you for bringing John back. Of course. Okay, well... It's interesting that the characters feel the need to say thank you to Arthur for bringing back a member of the group. Hello? Like, it, it could be considered decency, but considering we've seen that Arthur has some issues with John, there's a bit more that could be read there. Good morning. Another cold morning. How are you feeling? Not too bad, considering. Good. Okay, brother. Let's see what Mr. Pearson wants. If someone's coughing too much, that means they're going to die later in the story. It's the law. Goodbye, Jose. Welcome to the 2020s, where coughing means a whole different thing.
I think he's just old. Alright, so this is everyone's horses. Brown Jack is fucking massive. Maggie and Boz. Oh, hey. Hey, Charles. You okay in here, Charles? It's alright. Considering. Well, try to rest that hand. Well, try to stay strong. I hope, I, I hope okay, we've not made Charles sleep in here because he's a person of color. I hope he's just tending to the horses. Charles is interesting because he is, um, he's half black, half Native American. So, for him, like, life right now, just by mere existence, is not great. Mr. Morgan. We're okay. We have a few cans of food and a rabbit. For what, 10, 12 people? When I was in the Navy. I, I do not wish to hear about what you got up to in the Navy, Mr. Pearson. We were stranded at sea. Don't care, I'm gonna tell you anyway. Days. And you unfortunately survived. When we ran away from Blackwater, I wasn't able to get supplies in. Well, when government agents are hunting you down. It's interesting that Arthur tends to to use a lot of black humor, like unfortunately you survived, or you know, he he tends to put like put people down. Now, sometimes shopping trips need to be cut short. We'll survive. We always have. And if needs be, we can eat you. You're the fattest. I sent Lenny and Bill hunting, and they found nothing. Well, Lenny's more into book learning than hunting. Bill's a fool. Unless those mountains are full of game that want to read, ain't no wonder they found enough, enough of this. Again, Lenny we'll can read, which something. is interesting. Come on, Arthur. Wait a second. Hold on. Uh, here. You need some meat out there. Assorted salted offal. Starving will be preferable. Come on, let's go. You can't go hunting. Look at your hand. I can't stay here listening to you two. Look, if there's game in those hills, I'll find it. And you can kill it. You need to rest, Charles. You think this is rest? Come along. I don't know if Arthur puts people <laughs> down because it's a banter thing, because there are those close level of friends, or if it's because of maybe some some own personal issues that he feels the need to put others down because of how he feels about himself yeah. as well. You take this. I can't use it and you'll have to. Oh, you're joking. Use a gun and we'll scare off every animal for miles around. You're never too old to learn, I imagine. All right, let's head out. Oh, also, do you know what's cool, chat? It is later on, there's a cinematic camera mode that I can use. Up, I'm okay. Oh, oh here it is. Stupid mistake. Still bad? It'll be fine in a day or two. I just can't pull a bow right now. Oh, uh, sure hope I can. Never really got the hang of it. You'll be fine. It's interesting, because when we see Arthur oh, in... So I think Arthur's someone who who isn't a fan of maybe group dynamics. Like, even though everyone looks to Arthur for support and and leadership and inspiration, it seems that Arthur's maybe a bit uncomfortable with this point of view because the moment he's one on one with a character, he talks completely differently to them. But he's the moment there's another person present, he has all the bravado and he's the big man and and stuff. But then you know. He, he's minutes uh, minutes ago. He was like, "Oh, we'll eat Pearson. We'll do, I do not care about your your navy stories." And then when he's with Charles, he's like, "Yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing," which is again quite quite interesting. He, he seems to be a character who has a lot of internalized problems with himself. Pearson doesn't know what he's talking about. Now the weather's eased off a bit. They'll be needing to feed. We'll head up this way. Find some higher ground. <sighs> Been a wild few days, all right. That ride north from Blackwater, getting stuck in the storm, bringing John back in. You've had a lot put on you. 
I wish I could have done more. I didn't mean it like that, just a lot to think back on. I still don't really know what happened on that boat. Me neither. So, well, Javier told me a bit, Charles also wasn't there for the boat. The show weren't good. This is just procedurally generated camera work, by the way. This isn't a cutscene. Like, I'm still fully in control. Well, I think this part is actually a cutscene, but... <laughs> Like, the cinematic camera really does make you feel like you're just watching a movie. And it's a beautiful game. Like, yeah, this is all just... Like, I'm not really doing anything. See some of the here. Let's look down this way. The wind's died down, too. That's good. No wind at all is bad. But if it's too strong, they won't move. Now, shh. Stay quiet. It is interesting how we see Arthur defer to authority, though. Like, in this scenario, he knows he's not Stop the knowledgeable one here, so he has he's deferring to Charles. I forget the bow. Has deer been here? Recently. How can you tell? How can you not? Let's walk it from here. You're gonna need the bow. Don't leave it on your horse. Gun will scare everything around. Horse weapons. Bow. Keep down. Move quietly and slowly. Yeah, Arthur strikes me as the kind of guy who... You see the tracks? Would rather just so. get on with Maybe things. Focus. Uh huh. It's easier in the snow, but once you get your eye in, you'll be able to track nearly as well in grass and woods. Those two D branches were uh, not great. Your scent is also showing you yeah. Blowing in the direction of the wind, animals will flee if they smell your scent, so remain downwind and far away from when hunting. You crafted a fucking scent mechanic, but you couldn't make non-2D branches. To be honest, the scent mechanic is more important. To be fair, I am playing the game on a bit of a lower resolution for streamability. Shh. Down there. You see him? Quick, get that bow out, Arthur. Try to hit him in the neck or head. Nice. See nice. That was a good shot. Hunt another deer. Got it. Well done. I think that's all we can carry. Approach a deer carcass. Pick up one, I'll get the other. No, this is my one. Okay? Back off, Charles. Uh, it'll be fine once I get it on my shoulder. Okay, I'll go grab the other one. Arthur is strong. Also curious, we don't see Charles explain how to use a bow, hold the string properly, load the arrows, probably, probably a couple of times. Well, Arthur does mention that he has used one in the past. He's just not quite got the knack for it. 
Your horse will respond to calls as long as it is in range. Continue to bomb with your own horse to increase that distance. What are you doing? Let's get out of here. I'm going, I'm going. Keep your hair on. Oh boy. Okay, boy. Ready to head back when you are. Come on then. Let's head back. Whoa. Animal carcasses can be dropped at Pearson to contribute nice to gang supplies. That. Should be enough meat here to keep us all fed for a few days. View fountain. I knew you'd be okay with that bow. It's easier when they ain't shooting back. <laughs> We've seen enough of that. Considering how things were looking a couple of days back, well, maybe our luck is finally on the turn. Seems to me we should be putting our effort into getting off this mountain now. Soon. People are still weak, and well, you've seen how snowed in those wagons are. They ain't going nowhere until we get some more thaw. Mm, you're probably right. Right now, and we are... Even if we do get off here, what then? We still have a big price on our... When you write characters, you write characters as either proactive characters or reactive characters. And that system can shift. One of the reasons superheroes are so interesting is because, like, we'll look at we'll look at characters like the difference between um, Spider-Man and the Punisher, for example. Uh, Spider-Man is a reactive character. He doesn't actively go out and seek crime. He responds to threats. You know, he doesn't. Act, obviously, he does. He goes out on patrol and stuff, but he doesn't go. You know and hunt down the Green Goblin and just beat the shit out of him. He waits for the Green Goblin to do something and responds to it, which makes him more heroic, because that's why we, you know, we consider our, our national heroes are stuff, people like first responders. Um, it's people who identify a problem, or wait for a problem to emerge, identify the problem, and mitigate the problem. They, they try and fix the problem. The Punisher is a proactive character where he is he's an anti-hero. He is actively seeking out threats. He is he is the driving cause of the story a lot of the time. It'll be he goes to a place and he kills a bunch of people. And that's, that's the, your kind of quick and easy hint on how to write heroes and villains. Heroes are often reactive um, for good reason, on the side of good. Villains are quite often proactive on the side of evil and then you have anti-heroes who are proactive on the side of good and anti-villains which are very often not wrote about who are reactive on the side of bad and right now we're kind of in the reactive stage but you can we're in the reactive territory right now which helps us be more marked as the heroes. Notice how Pearson's had a bottle in his hand ever since we fled Blackwater. We give the camp cook five minutes to grab the essentials and go, and he doesn't even bring a crumb of food. Good that we caught more than one. A lot of mouths to feed. And that girl from the ranch now too, but not sure she'll be eating much. She has a wild look in her eye. You would, too. She lost her husband, her home, everything she had. Uh, so what do we do with her? Once we get out of here and we're back on our feet, we'll see. She might have family somewhere. So it was O'Driscoll's you ran into there? Yeah. <laughs> Last thing we was expecting. What is it with the O'Driscoll's? You ain't dealt with them? I suppose. Yeah, we ain't run into them much the last six months. Okay, so that tells us that Charles is failing new to the group. they've been over this way. Yeah, I've heard a lot of talk about them. Well, we've been scrapping over scores with them for years. Big gang. Nasty sons of bitches. Their leader, Combe, and Dutch go way back. And not in a good way. A proper blood feud. Okay. So I heard. Watch out! Bear up ahead. 
Let's see if we can find another way around. Where's the bear? I don't see it. Oh shit! There it is. Real hungry. Stay well back. Well, he's got a lot of meat on him. We've got enough here. No need to push our luck. Spring storms like this are the worst for animals that sleep all winter. Charles is very empathic as well, around just to the world around him. Cut up here, off the trail. He's very in touch with nature, which could be, you know, it could be slightly stereotyping, but for a man in his position in this century, it still kind of makes sense. Like, cliches, story cliches exist for a reason. Oh, sorry, story tropes exist for a reason. Tropes aren't, aren't necessarily a bad thing. Um, there's, a, there's an idea that people, people conflict um, tropes and stereotyping and cliches into one big narrative part of do not do that. Cliches are, are, are a narrative, yeah, stereotyping are, are a do not do that, and tropes, but tropes exist for a reason. Like, tropes are signif signifiers of a genre. Tropes signify the genre, it's like, this is a western, you know, we ride horses, we wear long brimmed hats, we, you know, we carry revolvers, those are all tropes. We ain't ever talked that much, you and me. How long you been with us now? Five, six months? Something like that. But you didn't expect this. What? Any of this. Blackwater mess. Being up here? Nah. Sooner or later, a job's gonna go wrong. Nature of life. I just thought you might have moved on by now. You want me to move on? No. This is something I'm stealing from someone else, another content creator called Dr. Mick, um, who, makes a, who made a great point about this. That line, where Arthur's like, I thought you would have moved on by now. It's very conversational, very relaxed. Charles, and it tells you about Charles' worldview, he immediately becomes defensive. He's like, you want me to go? And as a man who is um, in his position, um, being, being half black, half Native American, He's probably not used to being spoke to in a way that isn't very direct. So I think there there is a slight how to phrase this. There's a slight insight to Charles's character where it's like the way in which we respond to comments reveals a lot about how we are and how we view the world. I think Charles is someone who is used to being given very direct instructions. Go there, do this, do that. Which is maybe what attracted him to Dutch in the first place. But so his insinuation immediately that people don't want him around when Arthur's like, I thought you would have left by now, is is quite an insight of a man who maybe doesn't feel hugely confident about his place in the world, rightfully so, and is maybe more used to getting direct dialogue. Oh, not at all. I just I know you could run it alone, no problem. I did that for a long time. I'm done with it. I was wondering if someone's gonna kill you in your sleep. I still wonder that most nights. <laughs> I reckon you're okay. This suits me. Sure, I could fall in with another gang, but Dutch. You know, Dutch is different. Oh yes, Dutch is certainly different. He treats me fair. Most of you do. But for a fellow with a black father and an Indian mother, that ain't normally the case. Well, we need you now. More than ever. Good. 
It's interesting that Arthur doesn't talk about that the fact that the group is inclusive to, or well, most of the group is inclusive to people of color or people of different descent. Um, instead, he almost kind of dis like kind of tries to push it off of Charles, and it's like, yeah, well, we we need you right now. And again, it's it's this very defensive nature of of Arthur, where he he doesn't seem to want to let people in, and I'm like. Baby, baby boy, who hurt you? Have you been with these boys? But that's trained Why behavior. You off? Me? Oh, Twenty years, something like that. Since I was a boy. Twenty years? Yeah. He taught me to read. John too. He taught me a few other things. Him and Hosea. Huh. I'm sure. That saved me. Save most of us. There's a very casual That's why dismissal. We need to stick by him through this. He always sees Again, there's a very casual dismissal there of Susan. Um Susan Grimshaw is someone else who has ran with the gang for like twenty years. And he Arthur's like Hosea and Dutch raised me. But Susan has also been with them that entire time. Which again maybe tells us about how people view the world and how the intergroup dynamic works. Right. And here's Arthur immediately stepping up to that role where he, where that Dutch was like, He's I need right. you to believe in me because now. I need, you know, I need you I to you reinforce you my position. She's a strong one. Um, and he's doing that by just being like, yeah, you know, Dutch saved all of us, so we need to trust him. Same with Bill and Brown Jack. He's a drunk, miserable bastard, but... He loves that horse. Huh. I hope they all make it. I tried to ride the count once. Hucked me faster than a bull. Won't take nobody but him. I'm gonna hitch time over here. Gotta do some housework, but I'll... Back, you can use the lock command, my darling. Oh, come on, let's get these over to Pearson. Oh, and, uh, thank you for showing me how to use the bow properly. I only showed you a little. It takes a lifetime of practice to master. Does seem that there was maybe a cut line of dialogue explaining how the bow works. Well, well. Howdy. Just drop it down in here. Oh, what a surprise. I find a camp rat loitering around in the kitchen. Is that any way to greet an old friend? I feel like we haven't spoken for days. I do my utmost to avoid you. Oh, he loves me, really. It's his sad way of showing affection. No, it isn't. Uncle is a very insightful character. Again, this is some, but some of the some of the pre-knowledge I know. Uncle's one of those characters who doesn't say a lot, but very clearly watches the group. And I think he kind of just nails Arthur there, where it's Arthur's sick way of showing affection is to insult people. Now shoot, get lost. Uh, well, see you gents later. See, you got on just fine. Charles is a wonder. Have a drink, boys. You earned it. Jesus, what is that? Navy rum, sir. It's the only thing. The only thing. <laughs> Keeps you sane, it does. Yeah, oh. seems to have done a treat on you. You go rest that hand, Charles. I'll be fine in a few days. You mind helping me with the skinning, Mr. Morgan? It's easier if we do it together. I'll get to skin you. <coughs> You're always one with the jokes, aren't you? Come on. This really isn't a job for a man with a burnt hand. I'll see you both later. I wonder you how he burnt his hand. You, you dumped on the floor there. Also, I love little things, like, a way to make your characters distinct is that Pearson has a stammer. I love, as someone with a stammer myself, I love shit like that. Because you can, you can almost imagine reading this in a book, and you could tell who was talking in that scene, because one of them would be stammering. And it's like, okay, so that's Pearson. Not too bad, Mr. Morgan. Yeah. They always said you were a butcher. You know, you could trade these or sell these in pretty much any town. 
If you're looking to make a legitimate bit of money, of course. Right now, I'm just looking to get off this mountain alive. Well, if you catch anything else, you bring it to me. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Heck, Arthur Morgan's first decent bit of hunting after all these years. Yeah, well, we're on the run now. Everyone's See, they do clearly care about survive. each other. Just make a good stew. Folk need it. The, the constant physical, physical affections show that they care about each other. You, you only touch people if you really like them or if you have a big problem with them. You know, you don't typically touch people that you're fairly neutral around. One other thing. When you get a chance, send someone down the track back to that farmhouse. Okay. Why? That poor woman's husband needs burying. Of course. And is it safe down there? Just send someone sensible. That's an interesting Nosita. Also, we have got to improve some of these graphics. Hang on. I'm gonna... Let's do a quick save and then, uh... Understood. Improve some graphics, shall we? I presume it would have saved after that mission, to be honest. Um, graphics. Texture quality. Advanced graphics. So means modify setting uh, restart. Okay. So yeah, we are we are almost two hours in, and we are barely out of the first mission. For reference. Like, yowza, you know? We'll just put on some music while we wait for the game to boot back up. Don't know what uh, the, the quality improvements are going to do to the game or to the stream, so you guys will have to let me know if anything goes wrong, okay? I disabled the wrong audio channel there. This is the Minecraft screen. <laughs> uh, story.
I just want to say, guys, while we're here, if you are enjoying the stream and you want to support it in a more financial way, a subscription or heading over to my Kofi account with exclamation mark tip is a massive, massive help. Uh, economic um, economic support is always appreciated, but it is never required. Uh, just know that your viewership is more than enough for me. So thank you all for stopping by and talking in the chat or just lurking, and I hope you're enjoying the show. I have a new microphone arriving tomorrow, by the way. Proper, proper XLR shit. New journal entry. Oh, we love a journal entry. Oh, it's just a picture of the deer. Okay, that's already looking a lot better. How's the, uh, how's the stream quality? We are using a bit of C uh, fair bit more CPU, but I don't see that being a huge problem. Hey, Javier. Hi. Hey. How are you holding up? I'm okay. Better than most. thing when you get a chance send someone down the track back of that farmhouse okay why that poor woman's husband needs burian yeah that looks a lot better is it safe down there oh, just send someone sensible understood all right Good hey call, that's Dutch. it's the least we can do for the poor woman I say Marky should do it, but that ain't a good idea. Anyway, try not to worry. All right, then. There's a bunch of folks in the other building if you want some company. Dutch is all the company I need. Okay, then. Okay, well, try to stay warm. Okay, Arthur. That's interesting. The body's in a wagon out front of the house. I'll send someone. Thanks, Jose. Well, try to stay strong. All right, Arthur. That's very interesting. Just the fact that she does, like, not at all respond to... to like, she seems to isolate herself quite a lot. Which I'm sure doesn't make her very favorable with the other members of the group. Ooh. Just let me think, please. Okay. I'm sorry. Hmm. I've seen that sort of thing before. Stay alert there, Javier. Okay. Up with you boys because I thought you liked action. A couple of days on the lamb, and you lot have all turned yellow. Apart from you, of course. Shut up, Micah. I ain't never seen so many long faces. Mm. I guess I guess folks miss them. That fell. But when I fall, I don't want no fuss. When you fall, there'll be a party. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Uh -huh. Funny, huh? Sure. <laughs> I don't feel like being laughed at by the likes of you two. Stop it! Interesting that Micah can dish it out, but he can't take it back. Now, you fools punching each other when Como Driscoll's needing punching hard. You want to sit around waiting for him to come find us? All of you, we got work to do. 
Come on. Are you sure about this, Dutch? Yes. We've both been through a lot recently. We hardly back on our feet yet. And the last thing we need is to get bushwhacked by Como Driscoll. Let's go. Polo. I know you hate him, Dutch. He's here for us. I doubt that. No, nope, you're just doubting me. I would never doubt you, Dutch. You... You always said revenge is a luxury we can't afford. This is the right call, Arthur. Take this. And this is about more than revenge for business long ago. They were talking about trains and detonators. Here, Cole always had good information. Come on. And you think now is the right time to hit a train? Now you might fancy living on deer piss and rabbit shit. I'm getting too old for that life. Mr. Matthews, Mr. Smith, Mr. Pearson. Would you please look after the place? There are O'Driscoll's about. Yeah. Couple of things. Um. We know the O'Driscoll's aren't here for us because we they were here first. So us going out is a response to them. Them arriving isn't a response to us. This is... See, this is what I'm talking about, about reactive and proactive. Dutch is framing, oh, we have to go after the Adriscals as a reactive response. But it's not. It's a proactive response. Which generally means, in storytelling, it's not the right call. No. Uh, tactical first strikes never work. He said, follow the main trail southwest. They're camped near some lake. Okay, let's go find these bastards. How's the or frame rate, chat? Is it, uh, is it solid? Their I've noticed a tiny, a couple of skips here and there. I wonder if I can turn on a frame rate tracker in the game. Graphics. Refresh rate 60, V sync, consistent mouse pointer. Uh, da, 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 da. No. General? Auto save on temperatures in Celsius, weights in pounds, clock is 12 hours, we're gonna put in 24 hours. Hmm, that's a shame. I know there's one built in on Steam, but... See if we can turn the Steam one on just now. If we have to uh, restart the game in order to do that. In game, in game FPS counter. We'll put it in the top left. We have to restart the game to get that to work. Okay. Just because it's a good way right now to keep track of frame rates. And actually, no, what I'll do is I'll put it in the bottom right and we'll hide it behind Adric on the stream. Bottom left, sorry. That way you guys don't have to constantly look at a wee number that's fluctuating. Hope we're all enjoying the stream.
So, I've been having issues with PayPal recently. Just we story time while we wait for the uh, for the stream to load. Oh, the game back to to load back up again. Um. Yeah, I've been having some some problems recently with PayPal in which. Do you ever set up a PayPal account and then your account gets immediately limited or like suspended or something? That's what happened to me. Uh, and I put it off like fixing that problem for months because I have to call them. It's going to be a whole thing, you know, that effectively they're a bank at this point. It's going to be a whole thing. Da -da 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 -da. Called them up today, just kind of kind of off, kind of out of nowhere and was like, hey, here's the problem. And they're like, oh yeah, it was a... Uh, Seems to be an automated system error. Um, we'll fix it in like two, three days. It's like a five minute phone call. I put it off for months. So here's your message chat to go and do the thing. Go and do the thing you've been putting off. thing when you get a chance send someone down the track back to that farmhouse okay well, okay I we don't need to hear us for a third time husband needs burying of course and is it safe down there oh, just send someone sensitive. okay we're getting a fairly solid 50. Oh, drops down to about 45, 48. Oh, boys, because I thought you liked action. A couple of you know what? We'll days just, on the lamb. We'll just skip this cutscene as we've already seen it. Oh, I can beat that. I have two pillows, one thinner and one thicker. I sleep on the thinner one. The thicker one hurts my neck. Some days I swap them around and my neck hurt. Oh, no. The thinner pillow is literally right fucking next to me. And you know what? You didn't do anything. I slept on the thicker pillow for a week until I finally switched them back. Southwest, right on. That's what we call executive yeah, dysfunction, to my knowledge. Near some lake. Okay, we are dropping to about 50 frames per second, but if is that okay for the stream? If, if it's not a huge concern for you guys, then we can just keep going. I think I'm only streaming at 30 FPS. Yep, looks fine to me. Perfect. What's that? Tracks. Horses, quite a few of them. Interesting. As far as I can tell. Yeah. Let's try and get a shot of that. Out here. Out here. I wonder if there's something to be said about the order in which we ride. Trusting them. Like, I wonder what it, it says about each character. Way. You know, we've got... Javier, Lenny, that, Micah, and Bill with us. Listen, I know you don't think much of my ideas recently, but this is the right move. Okay. You know I got your back. I learned a long time ago that you hit Como Driscoll. Like, Mike has only been with us for a couple of months, so it's quite interesting that when he initially we turned back, he'd forced himself to the front of the group. put to rest, one way or another. Whereas, like, Javier and Bill seem to be Some I can people who have been with the group longer. Ergo, that should be their positions. You can, Micah is a hype man. You can see why Dutch yeah, likes having him around. Let's cut up here and take a look. They said it was near the lake, so we must be close. He questions everyone but Dutch. Like he's a he's a boot he's a pathological bootlicker, and you can already tell that. I wonder what the frame rate will become once we enter towns and stuff. All right. 
right, gentlemen. This is it. Are we goddamn ready? Ready, Dutch. Good. Now, Mr. Morgan and I, we're gonna head up here a little, see if we can't get a sense of the layout of the camp. Mr. Williamson, Mr. Bell, you two take up a hidden position. The, I think Dutch uses Mr. the Summers. last names as a sign of respect, whereas everyone else kind of does it as a sign of maybe contempt. Because this is very respectful, you know, he's addressing them as Mr. Summers. And it puts everyone on the same level. Because, like, you know, you wouldn't be at all surprised to be like, okay, you know, Mr. Williamson, Mr. Bell, Mr. Marston, you do this, Lenny, Javier, go do that. That says something when you choose to write your dialogue like that. But when everyone gets the, the privilege of being referred to as Mr., that's the key difference as well. He refers to him as a Mr. Something, whereas, like, we refer to Mike, or Mike refers to us, or we refer to John as just Marston or Morgan. It's it's the lack of acknowledgement of respect with the title. Mr. Escuela, you two hold position here. Let's go. A lot of write like it sounds like a lot like I'm talking about psychology, but a lot of writing is psychology. It's, it's psychology and philosophy. You can only write convincing people if you understand how people are. It's why I always promote the idea that my audience and you guys should think critically about the stuff you watch and you read and try and figure out why the the writer is doing something not just necessarily they that they are doing something it's very formal as well which says oh, things about dutch he seems to be a very so. formal person in many yeah, senses yeah agreed yeah whenever watching pieces of media um it's important to think about why someone's doing something not just the characters, why the writer is doing something. What theme, what reason are they putting these positions in... Or putting, the, putting these people into positions. Because all of it is in benefit of the story. Of course, guys, if you have any story writing questions as well, if you have any narrative questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. I will answer them to the best of my abilities. Uh, for those of you who don't know... I have um, I have a, a bachelor uh, a bachelor's degree with honors and a master's degree in uh, film and writing, and I work as a filmmaker. And in my spare time, I am a wannabe author, so I do a lot of narrative construction stuff uh, with my day to day life. And my goal is to kind of bring those skills onto Twitch so that you guys can look at the art. All right. Let's Arts and games as visit. um in a different way. Also, we're presented. Look at us. We have the option here. We could shoot. We have a sniper. Don't we to could take horse. down Cole Madriscoll. We could end this blood feud today, but Dutch doesn't want to because he's you vain. Be he has pride. He there. wants Colm Colm to know that we beat them. So it isn't just about, like, we have to do this. It's very much like, I hate this guy, and I want to show him that I'm better than him. That rifle's no use to us sitting on your horse, Arthur. Good. Come on, let's go. We'll circle around the far side and go down that way, same as Mike and Bill. Like you said, revenge is a luxury we can't afford. Yeah, just... Wasn't sure you agreed with me. Arthur. Arthur, have you completely lost faith in me? Our needs right now are supplies, equipment, and a way out of here. Everything else, including calm, can wait. Okay, okay, so... So this is gaslighting. 
like just to be blunt, this is gaslighting. This is after having gone, this was a bad idea. We shouldn't do this. This isn't, a, and, and even, you know, Hosea was saying earlier, it's like, we can't do stuff like this. We need to survive. And Dutch has maybe ridden out here. He's thought about it and he's realized, oh shit, they're kind of right. They're kind of right. So he reframes the conversation to be like, no, you know what? I agree with you. But he doesn't give them the satisfaction or give them the respect to go, you were right and I was wrong. Instead, he's like, he he re, he agrees with us, but he never actually acknowledges that he agrees with us. He almost presents it as his idea. There's enough of those bastards down there to deal with as it is. Now, come on. And he was always thinking like this. You just misunderstood what he meant. Like people. People are often surprised about the way Dutch's character turns out, but it's the writings on the wall from the moment you meet him. It's the first thing he says. It's very obvious that, like, there's something up with Dutch. And it's a very manipulative thing to say. Again, with the accusations. Exactly, yeah. Which is probably where Arthur has learnt it from. Oh, watch out. It's a bit steep. Arthur because Arthur uses the the digs on people in the same way that Dutch uses accusations. Dutch has a pathological need to have people believe in him. Which makes me wonder how much he believes in himself. If he needs that Maybe external I validation. Take the lead on this. They're going to be gunning for you. They ain't got me yet. No, but the way our luck's been running. Hush. Let's just get down. There's another there there's another mention of luck. Follow me. Let's head for that building in front. Luck is a very good justification for your reactions to things and the way your life is. It's, I'm just unlucky. That was unlucky, you know. Um it's a very good justification for, for the way life is. He, life's only good for him because he's lucky. It it strips an individual of their agency. Uh, and if you want characters to feel like they don't have agency, a good way to do that is to have them constantly bring up the concept of luck. It means that these guys don't have to be responsible for the scenarios that, like, the events that got them into these scenarios. Because it's just bad luck. Nothing we could have done about it. Okay, let's get in cover. <laughs> that fella smacked you up something stupid, huh? So. What the hell are you Messed that one up. Oh, my audio is cutting out there. Let me know if the audio is cutting out for the stream too. Get some beans. Keep pushing forward. I think that's all of them. Search the bodies. Strip everything we can from them. You recognize any of them, Dutch? Of course not. Cole doesn't give a damn about his men. All he cares about is numbers. Again, there's a there's a good example of Dutch and the gang differentiating themselves from Colm. Colm doesn't care about his men, but we're a family. We're a group. See? 
I respect you. It's it's preemptively it's reassuring that we are the good guys. We're better because we respect each other. Yeah, is, uh, is the audio cutting out at all for you, for you guys? It's always better to be on a defensive position here because at least here we have each other, you know, we have the cliff behind us, which means that we know it's unlikely that someone's going to sneak up on us. Which means that we get to funnel them into like a kill box. Rather than us going out into territory that we don't know that they do. They're not running away, they're fucking dead, Dutch. We don't have time to mess around. Okay. Let's wait for Javier and Lenny. They're coming down with the horses. Keep an eye out for any more of the bastards. Nice of you two to join us. Is everyone alright? I think so. Good work, boys. Now, let's tear this place apart. <clears throat> Bill, you go search that wagon there. Mike, search that building. Arthur, you take that building to the left. All right, man, quick. Find those detonators, explosives, anything you can. Let's go. I want to go see what the other characters are doing. Let's go have a wee look see at Micah. What do we got here? Perfect. The plans. Alright. What's Bill doing? Anything good, Bill? Nope. This looks good. What do you think, Bill? Well, looks fine. <laughs> Smells good. Okay, so Bill's our explosive expert. Did we get everything? Think so, boss. Found this on one of them. Thank you. This is perfect. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Micah is immediately hyping up the plan again. He's like, yeah, we can steal it. We can, this is perfect. This, this is what we should do. We should steal their score. This is something about the train they was going to rob. A Mr. Leviticus Cornwall. Mount back up. Fancy let's name. Keep moving. Leviticus. All right, let's get out of here. Proudy Isn't Leviticus a passage in the Bible? You boys, all of you, got a man down. Good work, fellas. Not bad for some starving down and out. They can pummel us hard as... Pretty sure Leviticus is a passage in the Bible. The book of Leviticus, yeah. It is, uh... Hmm. I wonder if there is some, um... some symbolism there um 
The instructions of Leviticus emphasize ritual, legal, and moral practices rather than beliefs. Nevertheless, they reflect the worldview of the creation story in Genesis 1 that God wishes to live with humans. The book teaches that faithful performance of the sanctuary rituals can make that possible so long as the people avoid sin and impurity whenever possible. The rituals, especially the sin and guilt offerings, provide the means to gain forgiveness for sins and purification from impurities so that God can continue to live in the tabernacle in the midst of the people. Wonder if that has any um, foreshadowing. I genuinely don't know. I don't know if that, that is supposed to be symbolic of something. Daylight, but we will always get back up and fight. That's who we are. Outlaws for life, fellas. Wait until we have John, Mac, Charles, and Sean back riding with us, and I believe, I know, they will all be back. Well, you didn't get calm, but this hit will hurt him a lot more than any bullet in the head. Especially when we rob this train, too. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll see about that. Oh, indeed we will. You know, he'll come after us. Oh, of course he will. Just like all the rest. But we're Outlaws for life Make sure we is a very dangerous framing. Because, again, this is we bringing up... We have a pl We don't want to... The goal isn't to be outlaws to life for life. It's to get some money, get some land, and... We have a plan. But... That plan seems to contradict with our moniker, our, our, our group's beliefs. All right, dig in, fellas. Let's make some ground. Dutch's philosophy is very inconsistent, you know? And it, it's concerningly inconsistent. Wasn't he at the camp with Cone? Leave him to me. All right, we're heading back. Just bring him back alive. He could be useful. Okay, you got it. Come on. Well, there's an easy solution here. Hang on. I like Come your hat. On, I, I, I'm nobody, mister. Oh, please don't. What's your name, boy? I don't know. You don't know your name? It's Kieran. Kieran what? <laughs> Duffy. Kieran Duffy. Well, I ain't gonna lie to you. This is a real bad day for you, Kieran Duffy. Where are you taking me? Somewhere you ain't gonna like. Why? What are you gonna do to me? Some fan you ain't gonna like. So I'd advise you to save your breath for screaming. No, please! Hmm. Interesting that Kieran is already trying to justify himself. I mean, you would. You Don't in this panic please. scenario, you're like your anything to get off the the back of this horse. Which means we can't ever really trust what Kieran's telling us oh, because no, no, he'll do anything. Oh, like. He's, he's scared, and he has every right to be, considering what we're saying to him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Okay. Not one more goddamn word. Am I clear? Okay, okay. That's two bones right there. Here we are, you sack of shit. Let's introduce you to the boys. Remove Karen. Don't hurt me, please. Oh, don't worry. They're real nice. What's the point in this? We've already established that Colm doesn't care about these guys. So, there is no real strategic use in kidnapping one except for info. You found a little shit, did you? Yep. I got him. Very good. Welcome to your new home. Hope you're real happy here. <sighs> You want me to make him talk? Oh no, now all we'll get is lies. Uncle, Mr. Williamson, tie this maggot up someplace safe. We get him hungry first. I got a saying, my friend. We shoot fellas as need shooting, save fellas as need saving, and feed them as need feeding. We are gonna find out what you need. I can't believe it! An O'Driscoll in my camp. No, I ain't an O'Driscoll, mister. I, I hate that fella. Oh, whatever you say, son. Well done, Arthur. I'm just sorry we missed out on Cole. Oh, there's time enough for that. Now, I gotta figure out if we can hit that train. Okay. But, but we didn't miss out on Cole. We chose not to shoot him. Like, now we're justifying our shitty attitude. You know? We're justifying not doing what the group ways. wants. Dutch being Dutch, he is busy making plans, and Dutch being Dutch, those plans involve robbery and dreams. Well, I thought you was reading him his last rites. Now I see you're introducing him to your other passion. I'll mind you to show me some respect, Mr. Morgan. Mind away, Reverend. You still here then? Evidently, uh, the Reverend and and Arthur are not that close because when Arthur insults the Reverend, he doesn't take it as a joke or some sign, some sign of affection. He takes it as an attack. Yeah. And you'll pay me. But for the moment, just rest. Arthur. I think it's time for the train. You want me to come? Of course I do, but look at you. I was always ugly, Dutch. It's just a scratch. Don't lie still, son. Hello, Abigail. Dutch. Jackie. The boy wanted to see you, John. He see me now. Or what's left of me. What about you? Guess I was hoping to see a corpse. <laughs> Bide your time. You'll see plenty of them. You're a rotten man, John Marston. He is an idiot, Abigail. So John's problem is his son. Because when he's with Dutch, it, you know, when he's with Dutch, he's like, yeah, you know, it's fine, it's nothing huge. But the moment Jack comes in, he's like, yeah, he's seen what's left of me. Like the moment Jack and Abig Jack comes now, in the room, the attitude down. shifts. Bill, now you ride ahead and set the charge at the water tower just before the tunnel. Ain't a problem. Why are we doing this? Weather's breaking. We could leave. I, I thought we was lying low. Yeah, come on. What do you want from me, Hosea? I just don't want any more folks to die, Dutch. We're living, Hosea. We're living. Look at me. We're living. Even you. But we need money. Everything we have is in black water. You fancy heading back there? No. Listen, Dutch, I ain't trying to undermine you. I just... I just want to stick to the plan, which was to lie low, then head back out west. Now, suddenly we're about to rob a train. What choice have we got? Leviticus Cornwall's no joke, Dutch. What choice have we got? That's a very controlling language.
because effectively all Dutch has done, he has presented one option on the table and went, we have no other choice. We have to do this. It's the only the only option we have. He's not. Jose, he is challenging Hosea to come up with something else, but because Hosea has been in the camp the whole time and doesn't know what's going on in the world around him, there is nothing else that Hosea can contest with. He's like, well, we could do this. There is no alternative option. It is Dutch. Dutch is effectively saying, this is the plan. This is the only option we have. We have to do this. You have to deal with it. Again, it's a proactive thing being framed as a reactive response. Where's Leviticus Cornwall? Yeah, he's a big railway magnet, sugar dealer, oil man. Well, how good for him. Sounds like he has more than enough to share. Dutch! Gentlemen, it is time to make something of ourselves. Get your horses ready. We have a train to rob. All right. Micah just immediately ran into me. I think that was unintentional, though. Okay, gentlemen, listen up. Oh, Charles is with us. You, according to the information so kindly provided to us by the Odriskies, the train will be coming north from Big Valley. We're going to pick it off after it crosses the border into the Grizzlies. There's a raised spot there that should give us good vantage. Charles... You'll keep lookout for any outriders. How's that hand, by the way? I'll be fine. Good. I'll take the driver and engineer, then run point. Lenny and Javier, you two take the front cars, deal with any guards. Arthur and Micah, you head straight for the back. That's what we're after. Mr. Cornwall's private car. You and me, Morgan. Great. Have you got a problem with that? Not if you keep your head for once. You worry about yourself, huh? Enough! Have Again, Micah has immediately got defensive. We're gonna need to move fast. Is everyone clear on what they're doing? Yep, Crystal. Yes, boss. Good. Now come on. Let's ride! Interesting there in the cutscene, Micah has again forced himself to be up front with Dutch. Maiko is someone we're going to have to watch out for. I like the hype up here. You sure you're ready for this, kid? Of course I'm ready. Just stay calm. Keep your eyes sharp. I like the yeah. I like the hype up here. No mistakes. Not again. Micah. So we do this, then we go back to Blackwater to collect. How many times you gonna ask the same question, Micah? That's a lot of damn money to leave sitting for too long. It would be crazy to go back there now. The place will be swarming with Pinkertons. We go back when I say we go back. And that's the end of it. The money's safe. You'll just have to trust me. And if the O'Driscolls are right, there'll be a stack of railroad bonds on this train. There's the water tower. Hold up here on the ridge. Is Bill there? Yeah. You want to head down? See how he's getting on? Okay. I'm trying to deviate from the path and the game won't let me. 
the most on the nose comment about Rockstar games I've ever said. Ooh, we need to fill up some stamina. Let's get some sweet corn in me. Apparently, sweet corn offers no nutritional value, which is really disappointing because I love sweet corn. It's my favorite vegetable. I happen. I'm okay. You sure? Of course. Can I help a little? All right. Go ahead and set up the detonator by those rocks over there. Okay, sure. Now just unspool the wire and then attach Bill. It to said detonator. Bill strikes me as well as a man who's very proud, because he accepts help, but only when we position ourselves as volunteering. Initially, he's very defensive. This group seems to be filled with people who are very proud and very defensive. What the fuck was that? Okay, this is good. All right, that should do. You head back up to the others. I got it. That's a very cool shot. Bit of a uh, bit of Dutch courage. On? He says all fine. We'll soon find out. Oh, my horse is Everything shivering. Okay? I think so. Okay, cover your faces. Train should be here any minute now. Gentlemen, it's time. Good luck, all of you. You all know what to do. Here we go. Oh, shit. It was fine. Was my fault. Come on! You're pathetic. You know that? Interesting that he calls out Dutch for being pathetic there. Oh, are we really doing this? Okay. Oh, bye, Javier. I wonder if I can stealth kill this guy. Oh shit. Stop the train. Oh, 
Oh, good thing I brought this rifle. Yeah, it's our boys. Oh, I'm just gonna. Stole my hat. Don't know how I'm smoking through a mask, but yes, let's get the money and go. We got some fellas holed up in this last car. Ah, shit. What are you boys planning on doing in there? Listen to me. We don't want to kill any of you. Any more of you. <laughs> I give you my word, but trust me, we will. Ah! Leviticus Come on, boys. We know you Whatever. work for Leviticus Cornwall. Okay. That's why we're here. You asked for it. We Five, opening this door. Four, three, two, one. Seems our friends have gone dead. There's a hat over there, and I want it. Wake him up a little. Mr. Williamson, give Mr. Morgan and Mr. Smith some dynamite. You two boys go blow that door open. I want the hat. Give now me the hat. Matter too much to us, but you boys in there might want to take a step no. Seems good enough. Now light the fuse. I wonder if we can shoot it. Nice. All right, come on. Let's walk on out here. We don't want to kill you. We just want to rob your boss. Get on up there. Get that train. Can I get my hat back? I was hoping my horse would have my hat. Get on the train. Go loot the train. Look at this place. <laughs> it's like a palace. Well, now I've seen everything. Oh, you two got the safe? I'll search the rest. Oh, yes. Should be easy as cake. <sighs> What's your name? You're just That's gonna stand there, the kid. Pour me some brandy, will ya? I'm parched. Shut up. Me and Arthur did all the work. Yeah, kid did good. Didn't see you rushing to jump on that train. He's king. I'll give you that. Dear Mr. Cornwall, we are yet to receive payment of $2,000 for the initial phase of exploration at the Wapati Indian Reservation. As agreed in the contract deal between Cornwall, Corsi, and Tar and the Leland Land Oil Development Company dated November 9th, 1898. On receipt of the funds, we will proceed with phase two and three of the project, and we present you with a detailed report of your findings within the month. That's how it's done. Just a pile of papers. Bonds? 
I don't think so. Here, make yourself useful. At least we all know you can read. Give me those. It's a common, um, common way to make, to, to show uh, a character is uncomfortable about something. Like Micah being uncomfortable about his inability to read is to make fun of the fact that Lenny and Arthur can. Contracts. Invoices, Dear Leviticus, blah, blah, blah. thank you for the telegram and for your continued I'm interest really. in the Jameson Mining Sugar Company. However, any news you've received of mismanagement and financial difficulties at the mine in Annisburg are simply fake, and I would urge you to question your sources. <laughs> the coal industry <laughs> is quite different from the oil industry in a number of ways, so I certainly remain open to a business meeting at your convenience to exchange ideas and educate each other on our respective areas of corporate expertise. I would also be delighted to host you in Annisburg and give you a personal tour of the mine and its associated facilities. I look forward to further... So he's trying to buy this along, boys. out this company that he's partnered with. Any luck, Arthur? Nothing much yet. Well, let's keep looking. It's goddamn O'Driscolls. Ooh, cigarettes. These just seem to be contracts. Arthur, have you looked down the end there? I got twenty-five dollars. Uh, well, keep looking. There must be something. There we go. No, this looks like something. How's it looking in there? Got the bonds. I think I got him. Nice. Well, thank God. Come on. <clears throat> Is that? Can we take that fine brandy? Mm. <laughs> What did you find? These bonds. They worth anything? Oh, sure. <laughs> Bearer bonds. I think we can probably sell these pretty easily. Well done. Now, would you get rid of all of this? The train? Yeah, get it out of here. What about them? What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> it's up to you. Kill them, leave them here, take them with you on the train. Just make sure they don't send no folk after us. Okay. See you back at camp. When you get back, hmm. we'll be moving on. The rest of you, let's ride. Yeah. Okay, get on the train, quick. Maybe we should kill one of them. Come on, move. I hear so much as a footstep from this car. You'll end up like all your friends out here. We are outlaws. Yeah. Hey, it's my hat. Like, I try to play this game as in character as I think it would be. So I'm not necessarily doing, like, a high honor run. I'm not doing a low honor run. I'm trying to do it as realistic as I think Arthur would be. And I think Arthur, you know, at this stage, might kill one of them. But it's interesting, and this is one of the issues with morality systems in gaming. We killed, what, 20, 30 people on this fight? But those three, those affect our morality. And that's one of the issues with morality systems in gaming. Is it's effectively, all of these people that I'm robbing now mean nothing. But those three guards, because they are, we, had the, we had the ability to talk to them, their life means something. We, we can kill indiscriminately as long as they don't have a cutscene, basically. Which accidentally does- it doesn't teach the lesson of morality, it accidentally teaches the far stupider lesson that people don't matter unless you can talk to them.
This is why I prefer games when they have morality systems where you can, like, disarm people or, you know, passive take down people rather than active kill them. So, we getting out of this hellhole? We're gonna try. Weather seems stable. And we just robbed the Leviticus Cornwall train. We got money in our pockets. The worst is behind us, gentlemen. So the question uh, is, where now? I know this country a little. I told you, we should set up camp in Horseshoe Overlook near Valentine. We'll be able to hide out there no problem, as long as we keep our noses clean. <laughs> well then, let's go. Clean hey, noses and everything else. Arthur, you're in that one. Bring Hosea. I know you two like to talk about the good old days and what's gone wrong with old Dutch. He's constantly enforcing the idea that we have a negative opinion on him. Which makes me think he has a negative opinion on himself because, you know, if... Now, I remember, I, I have played some of this game. I know some of the story. Um, and I've played Red Dead Redemption 1, so I know what happens to a lot of these characters, because Red Dead 1 is a sequel to this game. Um, but it may be Dutch's constant reinforcement that, like, Hosea and Arthur like to talk about the good old days and what's gone wrong with old Dutch, is a reinforcement of the idea that maybe Dutch doesn't like what's going on with him. Because if Arthur and John and Hosea all represent the good old days where things were right and good, then them constantly, you know, his, his paranoia that they're constantly talking shit about him and and scheming behind his back and... Because and, it is, it's paranoia. Maybe reflects on how Dutch kind of knows that he has taken some kind of shift and he's not the man that he used to be, and maybe he feels bad to some extent about that. Maybe there's an internalized feeling of guilt. Which again... Which again, with him killing that, that woman, is very likely. Interesting. It's interesting that the game kind of frames us more like acid pilgrims on a journey. Hey, Micah, get over here. With the music and yes, the atmosphere. Well, it's very much like we're on a pilgrimage, we're on a we're on a you know we're not refugees, but we're you know, we're people that you should have sympathy for. But we're we murdered like 80 people in those hills. It's very interesting the way the game chooses to frame us with the music and the cinematography and the mise-en-scene that we are in fact, you know, on this righteous journey almost. Like it's invoking images of, of the Oregon Trail and stuff like that. Of settlers, you know, traveling traveling into America to, to make a new home for themselves. Get us out the stream. I'm trying, Jose. Ah, shit. Okay, let's take a look. You all right back there? Does everything look all right? Well, what's going on? Ah, I broke the goddamn wheel. All right, let's get it fixed. You need help? I reckon we can handle it. All right, Charles, you and me hold the Where the fuck did Charles come from? You still strong enough to hold up a wig? Shut up. I'm just saying. Don't say less. Take the wheel up. Nearly there. There. See? You ain't so useless after all. <laughs> Not quite. What do you 
you think? If they wanted trouble, we wouldn't have seen them. Poor bastards. We really screwed them over down here. Interesting. Not necessarily the, the appearance of the Native Americans or even what Jose is saying, but just look at what characters are present for this interaction. You have Charles, who is obviously half Native American himself, and Hosea and Arthur, who are to some extent, and especially Hosea, representative of the good old days of where things were normal and men lived free and, and stuff. And they're the ones who are present for the Native Americans showing up and Hosea talking about how American colonization fucked over these people's lives. It completely destroyed them. Come on, let's not push our luck. What happened? Well, get in. I'll tell you. Not too far now. Stay on this trail. We'll follow the river, then cut left inland. So? Yes. The Indians in these parts got sold a very raw deal. This is the heartlands we're going to. Good farming and grazing country, they lost it all. Stolen clean away from them it was, every blade of grass. Killed or herded up to the reservations in the middle of nowhere. And how's that different from anywhere else? Well, maybe it's not. I just heard some of the army out here was particularly uh, unpleasant about it. Unpleasant? How do you rob and kill people pleasantly? We don't, in spite of that, just talk. I fear I was perhaps trying to simplify something more complicated oh. for the benefit of our... Oh, 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 that's good. Hosea tries to... Hosea tries to present an argument about how you know, American colonization and the Uncle Sam and the government, you know, the very people who are against us as well, are are horrible and while he doesn't excuse himself or, or arthur or micah or or you know us from those crimes or from benefiting from those crimes he's like well these the guys here particularly were, were particularly aggressive obviously you know not not us because we're coming into this land and charles immediately fucking shuts that down he's like how is that any different from from anywhere How's that any different from us? How's that any different from what we do? How do we, you know, how are we different from the, the US government who and military who came in and butchered all these people's land um, and stole their land? We butcher and steal from people all the time. And he just immediately shuts Hosea down. And it's a very interesting way. Here. And Hosea... Hey, don't blame it on me. Never forget. This here's a con man, Charles. Born and Hosea deflects. Just because it sounds fancy don't mean he knows a damn thing about what he's talking about. He's like, well, I was trying to I was trying to explain it simply for Arthur. So what happened to your trap? I don't even know if I have one. At least not that I can remember. My father was a colored man. He told me he lived with our people for a while. A number of free men did, but when we were forced to move from our lands, the three of us fled. I was too young to really remember much. My whole life I've been on the run. A couple years later, some soldiers captured my mother. Took her somewhere. We never saw her again. We drifted around. He was a very sad man, and the drink had a mean hold on him. Around 13, I just took off on my own. That was about the age we found young Arthur here. Maybe a little older. A wilder delinquent you never did see. But he learned fast. Not as fast as Marston, apparently. Wait, I don't understand. What's the problem between you two? Arthur? Yeah, it's a long story. Lots of stuff happened there. Are still heading the right way? That depends. Hosea, perhaps Are we in... still heading west in search of fortune and... Hosea, perhaps in, um... I'm gonna stop pausing when I do these explanations. It's just, it's hard when these guys talk so much. No. Are we heading in the correct direction on our desperate escape from the law eastwards down the mountains? Yes, I believe so. 
You know this area? Jose uh, immediately to tries to, and perhaps in response to what Charles said, re not reconnect, but Jose immediately tries to re-establish the similarities between us and Charles. It was like, oh, you know, you were 13 when you started. That's the age we found Arthur. He was like that. He's like you, Charles. It might be an unintentional connection, but it does seem to be a response to Charles calling it out his bullshit. You know, maybe it's me who's changed, not him, but we kept telling him that fairy job didn't feel right. You and me had a real lead in Blackwater that could have worked out. Maybe. It just isn't like Dutch to lose his head like that. Things go wrong sometimes. Again, it's very interesting that Charles is here for this conversation. It's the way it is. Always has. And it's very interesting. Me, you, Dutch. We've all been in this line of work a long time. It's very interesting here, so that Mark, the, the Arthur is repeating back what Micah said to him, to Hosea. He's parroting Micah, being like, well, you know, you lose people, it happens sometimes. Just some yarrow and ginseng. Good for the health. Better than that stuff you buy in the store. Yeah, you can have all this. I'm at the point where I can do it with my eyes closed. Okay, thank you. You acquired some herbs. These can be consumed to replenish your gold. So if Arthur and Hosea do represent the old ways when like their their relationship. Um it's very interesting that Arthur immediately falls on Dutch's side by repeating to him the same bullshit he heard from Micah. There's a lot going on in the dialogue of this game. It's brilliant. There you are, brother. Head in there. Follow the track for a bit. Hey, hey Javier. Hey, slow up. I'll jump on. Sorry, we kind of crashed into these bushes, Javier. Okay, let's go. Any trouble getting in here, Javier? Nope. It went well. This is a good spot. Excellent. I think this will work for us, Arthur. For now, anyway. And it's interesting that on the ride down into the new land, Dutch doesn't want to be with Arthur and Hosea. He doesn't want to be reminded of the here old ways. Home sweet home. Howdy, folks. You were wrong, Jose. This place Here we are. is perfect. I hope so. Gentlemen, we have survived. For now. Now it is time to prosper. Arthur and I were about to prosper in Blackwater. We were onto something big. Then Micah got you all excited about that ferry, and here we are. We have all made mistakes over the years, Jose. Every last one of us. But I kept us together, kept us alive, kept the nooses off our neck. The nooses you put there. I'm that. just worried. I ain't got that long, Dutch. I, I want folks safe before I go. Me too. And now we are stuck east of the Grizzlies and out of money and a, a long way from our dream of virgin land in the West. I know, my brother, but we are safe. We make a bit of money here, then we move again, head out around them, be west of Uncle Sam in a few months. Buy some land. I hope so. Would you just look around you? This world has its consolations. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm going to head into the local town and, uh, you know, see if I can strike up a little business. Of course, Herr Strauss. I prefer robbing banks to usury. Seems more dignified somehow. Now, everyone... Put your tools down for a moment. Come on, gather around. Quickly now. I know that things have been tough, but we are safe now, and we are far too poor. So it is time for everyone to get to work. Get to work, but stay out of trouble. 
Remember, we are itinerant workers. Laid off when they shut down our factory to the north. Now get out there and see what you can find. Uncle, Reverend Swanson, no more passengers. <laughs> it is time for everyone to earn their keep. There is a town a little way down the track named of Valentine. Livestock town, all mud and morons, if I remember right. That seems a decent place to start. And, uh, we need food. Real food. That means every day. One of you. And remember, whatever it is that you find, the camp gets its slice. Now be sensible out there. Now the girls have your tent ready, Mr. Morgan. Come with me. You two will be ready shortly. We put you over here. I'm sure everything will be fine, Miss Grimshaw. It should be. Most of your stuff from Blackwater got saved. Everything apart from my money. Oh, don't remind me. Well, <laughs> we can always make more money. We're gonna have to. Miss Jackson, Sleep, shave, I've and seen shit course. with more common sense than you. Do it properly. Chapter 2 Horseshoe Overlook And with Chapter 2, I think um, our first stream is going to come to a conclusion. A couple of weeks later. You know what, we're going to quit the game. We'll get out of this cutscene and then we'll quit the game. Got off the mountain. Road east into... Do we want it? Because this would be really good to start the next stream, but oh well. Pretty enough country called the Heartlands. I'll just have to read it out. This far east in many a year. Dutch seems a little better. His eyes are sparkling once more. And I can see he's thinking a little clearer. I think we all feel a little happier. In spite of black water and that whole mess. All right. Arthur. Right Jose. Oh. <laughs> Eat, drink, and rest to maintain your cause. Let's hope so. There's a bunch of the boys already in Valentine. Bill, Charles, and Javier. And Swanson found something down at the train station by the lake, apparently. And Strauss came back with that creepy little smile on his face. I'm sure there's a whole list of unfortunates he's forced money upon. <laughs> Thank you. And you? I'm gonna read a book. <laughs> <laughs> Jose is like the father, like the the old, the old father of the group. Let's get shaving. How long? I think that's a good length for our hair. Let's get a shave. Your beard is getting long. Can I just used the shaving kit. Let's do the best part of this stream, which is, of course, play dress up. Hi. Good morning. What's going on over here? Oh, hey, Sadie. In the dirt. Where those other O'Driscolls left my husband. Oh. Don't kill that O'Driscoll boy just yet. We need to get something out of him first. I ain't promising nothing. <laughs> okay. What do you think of your new home? Let me go now, please. No can do. Hey, Pearson. Arthur. Glad to be off that mountain, Mr. Pearson. Yes, indeed. Lots to do now. Yeah. All right. Let's finish up. And uh, call it stream there, I think. What did you guys think of the going back to the more narrative-based streams? Did you enjoy them? I hope you did, because I, I really felt like I was in my element with that one.
Anyway, I hope you guys had a good time. Hope you enjoyed your looks, and I hope you enjoyed the stream. We'll be back on with more Red Dead on Wednesday, and uh, probably Minecraft on Monday. Let's see if there's anyone we can raid. We'll go see Flat Cap. Um, of course, if you want to follow me on social media, you can. If you want to join the Sky Black Discord, which is a fantastic community filled with a bunch of great, chill people. Head on in there with us doing more narrative-based stuff. There's hopefully going to be a lot more discussion going on in the Discord. So, go and, go and get involved. And, of course, if you want to support the stream in a more direct way, you can either subscribe, throw me some bits, or... You can head over to my Kofi and give me a little bit of tip. It can either be a monthly thing or just a one-off thing if you don't want to go through Twitch. But financial support is appreciated but never required. So I just like to know that you guys are here and you are enjoying what I do. Thanks for watching, everyone. We're going to head over to a flat cap now who is playing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And we are going to give them some love. We're going from uh, from cowboy to Zelda cowboy. So uh, once we land, say some highs, you know, do some things, and uh, be the be the awesome community I know you all are. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>